floor vibrations and how we deal with them in practice. The, the schedule is broken into three segments. We'll start off with an introduction, floor vibration concepts, vibration measurements, and so on. We'll have a break and then uh, question and answers for 10 minutes. Then we'll move on to vibration criteria, vibration design for new floors another break and questions, and finally vibration mitigation for existing floors. And we'll finish up with a Q&A session for 10 minutes. Just want to uh, describe the scope of the seminar. We will cover vibration design for both human comfort and for sensitive equipment. So human comfort would be obviously the occupants of a building and uh, sensitive equipment would be things like MRIs, microscopes, uh, other sensitive instruments like uh, precision balances. We will focus on floors in buildings, not necessarily footbridges, although um, there are a lot of good resources on footbridges and this, uh, the principles of this seminar will apply to footbridges as well. We're going to talk about vibration due to human activities, primarily footfall and uh, exercise. and also on vibration sources that are within the structure. In principle, we're not really talking about ground-borne vibrations from trucks or cars or trains, but again, all the basic principles of the seminar apply to that type of vibration. All right, so let's begin. I'd like to first establish why this subject is important. Obviously, if you've signed up for a webinar, it's important to you for some reason. And uh, these are some of the reasons that uh, people are concerned about this topic. Um, it's an important serviceability limit state. If we have vibration problems in a building, uh, it can really uh, be a, a a difficult conversation with uh, a client. So we want to obviously avoid uh, floor vibrations in structures. For some reason, clients these days seem to be more aware of vibration limits and they're including vibration investigations in their due diligence studies when they're considering purchasing a building. Um, many projects these days, especially healthcare and uh, technology and biotech research projects actually have vibration criteria built into the design criteria for the project. If you have a vibration problem, it can be very difficult and, and or expensive to fix. Um, there's been an increased use of reuse of existing buildings and older buildings don't always have the best vibration characteristics. We've been asked increasingly over the past uh, 10 years or so, there's been a definite increase in requests for field evaluation of existing conditions. And because we're dealing with stronger materials, stronger steel, stronger concrete, we have more slender structures and that leads to more potential for vibrations. So these are all reasons why one might be concerned about vibrations in a structure, either a new one or an existing one. I want to distinguish between, uh, in buildings, between vibrations that are important for human comfort, that's the list on the right, and sensitive equipment, the list below. Uh, beginning with human comfort, there are various occupancies classes, beginning with the sort of most tolerant uh, class of occupancy would be a workshop in which you might expect floor vibrations to occur because of industrial activity, but there are actually limits to that having to do with uh, human comfort, um, uh, with uh, having to do with actually uh, uh, cognitive functioning in very high vibration environments. The next level down would be an office and it may, you may be surprised to learn that the de facto national guidelines for office occupancies do allow some vibrations that are feelable but uh, don't rise to the level of uh, actually um, being disturbing to most people. And so on, we go down the list, retail occupancies like shopping malls, residential, medical surgery, obviously we're getting into more uh, stringent vibration requirements, laboratories, and so on. With regard to equipment, we cross over into a range of very small vibrations that are generally not feelable or sensed by humans. And those would be imaging equipment like MRI, nuclear magnetic resonance, 
or a CAT scan machines, microscopy, particularly photographic microscopy, microchip production, things like growing crystals for microchips, pharmaceutical processes, and microbalances, and a whole host of other sensitive equipment. Here's an important distinction that I want to make right up front here, and that's between structural vibrations and acoustic vibrations. 